Hey, good, good, good week to you, I guess. I almost said good morning to you, but hey, how you doing this week? How's, how's everything going? I saw you were kind of busy and you're out going, enjoying the weather in Southern California. Well, I have been locked up in a garage and a storage unit for weeks uh, and, you know, moving and packing and unpacking. And I needed to be outdoors and in nature. And um, yesterday was the perfect day. It was like the first real sunny day in the city. And um, it was gorgeous. And there was so there, there was this there's waterfalls and like this big creek. And um, it's so full of water because of so much snow. So we got to the kids got to just play like real kids, you know, in the creek for hours. So I wanted to do that before it dried up. Do you run into anything like in the creek? Like I lived in Tennessee for a good portion of my life growing up. And there was always, you know, crawdads and frogs and stuff like that. Do in Southern California, do you run into that kind of stuff? Or is it just clear water? No, there was like an apple floating down. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's that's about as weird as it got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. Nobody lost an apple. <laughs> that's cool. That That's a good day. The, I love the fact that you take pictures, that you sit there and want to either create memories for your daughter or memories for yourself with your daughter. I always think is is great that you're sitting there bringing it all in. You and I were kind of talking a little bit before the show about the old days when you carried the camera around. Oh. And you had may maybe 24 pictures. And you didn't know what they were going to look like till you went and had the film develop. Well, you know, and I, I do still love the whole thing with film photography for people that are good at it. You know, I was never a good photographer. So me neither. I would maybe get one good shot out of the whole, you know, developed role. And um, I'm going through all my pictures now. You know, I've obviously had to collect all the pictures. And I have bins and bins of pictures that I now need to go through because I'm sure a lot of it was that whole pack. Right. And there's yeah, only going to be yeah. one photo out of 24 that I really need to keep. But these kids are so lucky with iCloud. Like, oh, my God, technology is amazing because you don't even have to have it. It's just exactly it's there on your device. You can you can take your whole lifetime of memories on like a little hard drive and your device. And it's just like to be able to throw on a like a, a slideshow. And just yeah. have it on your TV or your computer or your tablet, whatever. Like, I'm so envious of that. That's just so, that's so cool. So, yeah, I try to take pictures of how everything. Great is it? I'm crazy, but they're going to like it one day. Well, how great is it when you're with, you know, whether both your daughters or one of your daughters and you ask someone, you take a picture of us and you can look at it right away to say, can we redo it? Right. You know, well, yeah. and, and not, and not, no, well, you, you don't know, want to shoot off, you know, like five and then, you know, one. <laughs> when I, when I was a kid and I graduated high school, my dad had the, the camera with the 24 pictures and we walked through and my dad got 24 pictures of Enrique Pacheco. Didn't get one of me. He got one of a kid that's a foot shorter than me. And I was like, what the hell am I doing with 24 pictures of Enrique Pacheco? How do you not know which kid is your kid? You send but it we to him. It's good. Yeah, we got, we all yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we really got funny. nothing. My mom, uh, we were going to, uh, I did this big long shoot in Canada for Clan of the Cave Bear when I was a kid. And we were going to be there for months and months. And she bought this like fancy camera. And um, it was sort of a running joke because she would take pictures, rolls and rolls of pictures. And every time the guy developed, they were just all black. <laughs> they were all like, I don't know if she overexposed them. I don't know if she didn't load it properly and it wasn't actually taking pictures. But the entire trip, we didn't get any pictures. So then other other people from the cast and the crew and everything started like sending us pictures and giving us copies. <laughs> That's and funny. you know, taking pictures. So I have an album from it, but none of them were taken by my mom because yeah. she couldn't get it right with the camera. So remember the old photo mats. Remember you drive by and there'd be that little guy in the booth. Yeah. In the, and now the they're all yellow like, booth. Get your key made here and buy your Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right? hundred percent right. You got it. You nailed it. <laughs> and, okay, so wait, I found a new product that I'm obsessed with that I want um to share. It's made, it comes in this cute little bag. I love packaging. I'm a sucker for it. But May Coop makes it. It's called Raw Sauce. And um, okay. you sort of put it on after you've cleansed and um, it's like a moisturizer. But it is so amazing, people, because it gives you like this sheen or like this nice glove, especially for those days where you don't want to wear any makeup, which is most days for me. So um, I love it. Give it a shot. I order it from Peach and Lily. And um, I'm not sure where it comes from exactly, but raw sauce, raw sauce, raw sauce. Love it. 
I love that you mentioned the products because people say to me all the time, Nicole always looks so good. What is she using? And the fact that you started sharing what you are using on a regular basis, I I love the idea that you're doing it, giving the audience a chance. It also helps me out when the emails come in and people ask, what is Nicole doing? So you're kind of giving the answers out and you're saving me time. Well, in my late (laughs) 40s, I sort of became a product whore because I realized Um, I can't justify getting injections or (laughs) fillers and stuff like that. So I better do something quick with uh, products. So it's, um, we're constantly buying new products and trying them and I love it. So great. A lot of them are very effective. So we have a great guest today. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Um, she was always like, for me, the coolest chick. I mean, for a lot of us, I know, but I got to see her in person, like at parties and stuff like that. She always just had this like free spirit. And I just always was like, I wonder what life would be like to just be that comfortable in your skin. Like, and I'd be like in the corner, like, <laughs> too shy <laughs> to even talk to anybody, like probably look like a little snot, you know, just, I, could, I couldn't talk. I just couldn't, I wasn't very good. And I was so socially awkward. And um, she wasn't, and she was so cool. Always had the coolest clothes on. So let me introduce Ms. Lala Slopeman. You good all morning. Know her. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? Thank you for having me on. Thanks for joining <clears throat> us. Thank you so much. Because I just like, I, as you've probably heard, I just always looked at you and thought, wow, like, that's a free spirit. Oh that's my goodness. what I wish I could have. Lala, right. did you know you did you know you're that kind of person? I mean, it, it, and the reason I asked that question, I always say to my son, I said, there's always that person that walks into a room and people's eyes go to them, whether it's because either they're attractive or they have control of the room or they're basically self-confident. But you can always feel that one person. Did you know you were that person to someone like Nicole or other people? No, no, not at all. And I I it's it's crazy to hear it because I <sighs> I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I was, I mean, I just, I remember thinking the same thing about you. Like, I remember your little, you had these, um, these tiered like mini skirts, probably from Contempo Casual, and you wore like uh, cowboy boots, um, your beautiful blonde hair, and you would, I'd see you at like Alfie Soda Pop Club dancing. And I just, I, you seem like the perfect, person to me. You know what I mean? Like I felt like such a nerd, such a geek. I felt like so too much, too big, too loud, too embarrassing. Um, And I think a lot of it was a mask because I was so uncomfortable because I'd been through so much uh, trauma already in my childhood that I had to, that that I, I think the only way I could really get by was by sort of being the clown being like hilarious so that's that's what i was doing like oh that's that's so wild, it's so wild. wild? Who, you, i always like thought like what was like in your house and like you know you make up when you don't know things about people you make up like things that are probably is i, I was obviously very wrong like i i always thought you probably lived in this like super amazing free spirit kind of hippie house with like you know <laughs> not a lot of rules or just like, I don't know. I don't know what I thought, but I always wish I had it. So, um, well, we did. I mean, when I, but at that time, um, I, I did move in with my, my uncle Frank and my aunt Gail. I was 15 when I moved. Well, I lived with them many times. I lived with them when I was eight, uh, 11. Um, and I moved back in at 15 and was there until 19. And that's, that's when I met you around like 1985, 86. And, um, that that was a more grounded, stable part of my childhood. Prior to that, like my, my parents got divorced when I was two and there was a lot of chaos and I moved around to a lot of other aunts and uncles homes. And, you know, my dad was a Vietnam vet. There was just a lot going on. So that point, yeah, there. my Aunt Gail used to yell at us like, you need to shower with your boyfriend because we can serve water in this house. And it was more fine to me like, what? Shower n- naked with my boyfriend? I'm 15. What do you mean? <laughs> Conserve water? It was, I, I mean, it, it, it was completely unconventional and it was wild and amazing, but it was also like the most mellow 
uh, stable part of my childhood for sure. That's so point. interesting. Yeah. You talk about fashion and I always like, I remember you, Lala would wear like the big fluffy <laughs> skirts that we're in and like combat boots. And I was always like, God, to have like the guts to just, and the creative mind to like put those outfits together. I was like so basic. I was like, take stuff from wardrobe. Yeah, go into Contempo Casuals. Like, I'll just take that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was like, I didn't have any like sense of style at all. And um, and I always had like a controlling mom who was always trying to push outfits on me. So it was always like, I'm going to wear sweats then, you know, like, so it was always this like battle of um, what to wear. Right. So I was right. really given that freedom. So it's, yeah. I got yeah, a I lot of my, sorry, what was? No, no, go ahead. I, go ahead. Go ahead. I, my cousin Moon was um, in my, my, my Aunt Gail's daughter. She was in the house. So she had the most incredible ornate style. She would wear things that nobody would ever wear. Like one thing she always wore in the early 80s was a thermal shirt. Remember just like that ribbed thermal? Yeah. Okay, so she would put put it on. She'd step into it from the, the head, the neck hole. And then she would take the the arms, the long sleeves, and, and tie them in front of her. So it was like this fitted mini skirt with like a tie. And actually, I see things on the runway right now that look like that. It's like a jacket with sleeves that's wrapped around you, but it's, it's not a... It, Anyways, she she did the most bizarre things I never would have thought of. And she's where I got the combat boot thing from, which kind of took off. I think everybody was doing like a combat boot back then. But yeah, but you were kind of like before, like before it was like super on trend. <laughs> <laughs> I probably stole it from Moon, but thank you. <laughs> That's so cool to have somebody that you can like learn from like that. You know, yeah. I love the fact that both of you said the perception of what was on the inside and what you showed on the outside were two different things. And the reason, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. We were talking about being parents is with social media and especially Instagram. It, you know, it shows your highlights. And I used to have this conversation with my youngest son all the time because he used to always think everyone's living a better life than him. He was the one that was dealing with anxiety and he was the one that didn't understand why everyone seemed to be better off. Than he was now the perception both of you had of each other was completely different about how you felt on the inside but it's what was portrayed to the outside of what that person like me would would think of what was going on you know that there wasn't a sense of full security there that a little bit of insecurity well you know that's like i i always see this meme that or like you know the little the little quote that says something like you don't know what somebody's going through so just always be kind and it's like as corny and cheesy as that little like quote is it's so real because yeah, you don't know. You don't know what somebody's just. And then there's another one that says something like, "People don't fake depression; they fake being happy." You True. know, and that like hit me too because I was like, you know, that is so. That's what's so real. So people are so quick to be mean and judgy, and I think yeah. that's why people put out this like persona of everything so great on social media because um, people are so mean for yeah. no reason, right? They're just angry awesome. and they just want to lash out. The grass is always greener too, right? Like I'm, I my perception is is always off what I think, what I see on the outside, and I compare my insides to people's outsides. So that's another like perception issue. I have to always like keep it on my, you know, stay on my page, not try to um, figure out what's going on with anybody else, and to be kind because it, I didn't even realize how mean we were. At, as teenagers until I had a kid who's yeah. like dealing with stuff on social media, the way they talk to each other in Roblox, for instance, like trying to, um, what does she call it? Uh, like, it's like they're, they're always trying to roast each other, uh -huh. but it's so cruel. It breaks my heart, you know? And, and we were like that too. I remember being like that and not thinking even twice about it. I know. And our language was a lot, uh, was pretty harsh back then too. Yeah. Whereas a lot of that's not really acceptable anymore, but yeah. yes, yeah. It, it, especially online. Yeah. When they're online and they can't be held accountable, they're horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Yep. yep. 
Well, Lala, can you talk about your, your childhood? I think so many people have questions and are curious to know. I mean, you just brought up a bunch of things at the very beginning that it wasn't your, your normal childhood. I mean, to move house to house often and, and to figure out, you know, what is family life like, but yet you come from an extremely famous family. Can you talk about your childhood and what was it like living with uncle Frank? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was my highlight of my childhood was being at at uh, Frank and Gail's house um, because it was at my mom was my mother was, you know, she was an addict. She was violent. She had come from uh, my mom was one of 13 children. She had 13 brothers and sisters. My grandmother gave birth to 13 wow. kids. Yeah, I mean it's just crazy. I can't even. And then she adopted a few afterward. And um, my mom was the oldest girls, and there was a lot of violence. And I don't, you know, I don't think that my mom ever. She had me at twenty. My dad and my mom were both twenty. He had just been home from Vietnam, active duty for two weeks or something when they got pregnant, and they never, you know, they didn't have the tools we have today too, or the acceptance of, of, uh, trauma or mental illness, or, you know, so th th she didn't have any way of, of dealing with it. Um, or even maybe being aware of it because she was so, in her addiction so much. So there was a lot of violence at home and my dad, you know, he was, he was drinking a lot. Um, there was a lot of different I, I, like I went to my aunt's house in North Carolina and lived there for a little while. My aunt's house in Florida, my aunt's house in Hawaii. They shipped me around a lot. And I even stayed with neighbors at, at certain points. Like it was, it was nuts. It was crazy. Like I, I, I walked myself to and from kindergarten in 1975. I lived in Echo Park with my mom and I went to Echo Park Elementary and I, I mean, it was like the Hillside Strangler was loose in, in LA, <laughs> like <laughs> who knew where he was, but uh, bodies were being found. And I'm like five walking myself walking to school. Yeah. It, I mean, can you, I couldn't even imagine sending Lula to the bat, my child to the bathroom at a restaurant at five, let alone I walking to I walked to school area. also, like kindergarten, first grade, but we lived in Huntington Beach and mm -hmm. the, the school was at the end of our street inside of like a trap housing, you know, cookie cutter like kind of place. Not that there weren't creeps because there were, um, but it was just a different time too. I mean, yeah. different time. Yeah. Well, I, I went to high school right in that area, Lala. Mm -hmm. And even in high school, being a big size guy, it wasn't the safest area. No. Yeah. It certainly wasn't that safe. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I drive over there now and it's the kitty cat is still, there's a big gray kitty cat with paw prints painted on the, on the outside of the school. It's still, it was like a mascot back in the seventies, but yeah, I mean, it's a tough part of town. It's cleaned yeah. up a little bit. A lot of people love living over there now. It's more artsy and, but it, it, it wasn't that safe. No, no, <laughs> No. <clears throat> so going to Frank's house was like super fun. My my cousins, you know, there's this perception that my uncle was um, like a big stoner or took a lot of acid or, you know, he was, he didn't like drugs at all. He didn't, uh, you know, he didn't try any drugs. I think he, he maybe smoked two joints in his in entire life. He had, had said in a book, um, he liked to drink wine occasionally with a good Italian meal, but he wasn't, you know, he didn't, he wasn't the, the crazy experimenter with drugs that people thought he was. Um, that said, it was very bizarre. I mean, all the kids referred to them as Frank and Gail, there was no mom and dad in the house. And I mean, we just, you know, we could do pretty much anything we wanted. There weren't, there weren't a lot of rules. Like Frank, Frank was nocturnal. So he, the studio, the ground floor, did you ever come over to the no. house? No. The ground floor of the house was his recording studio. And then all the bedrooms were on the second floor. And so he would, he was, he was in the studio all night. 
you could hear the music like vibrating through the floor. You'd fall asleep to him recording. And then he would sleep all day. And, um, you know, like I think my cousin Amit left school at 12. And, and I think Diva, who's the youngest, she left school, I think at 14. And Amit, I mean, uh, Moon and Dweezil left school, I think in ninth or 10th grade. So did everybody they do like independent study or did they just like throw in the towel? Yeah, I, I mean, Moon and Dweezil did. And I did the same thing. Well, I moved in with them when I was 15. So I took, I left my first semester of um, my junior year and I took the California proficiency exam or the, the high school, uh, the GED, I guess it's, it is. Um, but Amit and Diva, I don't know that they, I don't think that they, that Amit ever did. I think he just was like, I'm done. And, and Gail, you know, what happened was Gail, uh, invented her own homeschool. I don't know how she did it. That I don't know like who she paid or what kind of string she pulled, but she created like a homeschool for, for Amit and eventually Diva. So they, they I, I, don't, I don't know how they graduated. <laughs> <laughs> how did what was it like having you know number one that the family's famous but your your cousins had the most bizarre names i mean i remember my <clears> sister who's a little bit older than me explaining the whole family to me and the names and and i was like wait what and <laughs> i was i was so uh, you know shocked of wait a second this actually happened and what was it like for you when you're like all right these are my cousins and and these are the, the names that no one else has yeah it, i mean I loved it because my name is very bizarre to people too. Not so much anymore. There's a few other Lala's, but um, my name's no, Lala. Is, is that weird? Is that because you were always like the only Lala? If anybody said Lala, it was you. And now right. you hear it, and you're like, oh. <laughs> I wonder is that bothering? Is that weird? Yeah, I mean it's strange because I was so well. First of all, I hated my name until I was about fifteen. I went my my name's Hawaiian for Lara, which is my my grandmother's name, <clears throat> and uh, from like third grade, because the Smurfs theme song was la 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 la, and people used to sing that to me at school and make fun of my name. So by third grade, I started going by Laura, and when I moved in with um, Frank and Gail in, at 15, I, they, uh, everybody, my family always called me Lala. So I, I just stayed Lala when I moved to LA, but it, it's weird to, to hear other Lala's there's like Lala Kent and Lala Anthony. And then there, sometimes I'll meet somebody and they'll say, Oh my gosh, I have a Lala in my family. And I think it's an Argentinian. Or, I'm not pronouncing that. My, my menopause is kicking in. Argentinian <laughs> name, yeah. Because um, <clears throat> I hear I hear quite often that people have a Lala in their family. It's so weird. Or somebody can't pronounce the name, like a, a, a smaller sibling doesn't know how to pronounce their name, so they end up calling him Lala. There's a lot of Lalas, and yeah, it's like, hey, that's yeah, my. That's my <laughs> I'm the only Lala. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I feel for you. I, I, I'm here with you. So what, it, how did you, so you, I know you moved around a lot. So what made you get like in the industry? Did you, did like jobs come to you or did you decide like, I want to be an actress or how did that all come about? Uh, so when I was, I remember being like five and six and, and, uh, being obsessed with movies and wanting to be an actress. And I used to, I think it was an, actually a way to escape the, the chaos at home. I would just go into this fantasy land and act out different um, characters and parts at home. Um, I did a lot of playing by myself. So I was always like, you know, uh, one of the Charlie's Angels or Shirley MacLaine and in... Um, that ballet movie, I can't remember the name of it, but um, I, I wanted to do it. And and it, it was just a strange events that had happened. I got, I got stabbed by my, I lived in Santa Barbara when I was 15. My surfboard stabbed, I sliced my leg open with my surfboard. Oh. And then five weeks later, I got run over by a car. And oh. my Aunt Gail was like, you know, 
that's too pretty gnarly. I was on crutches. I had to get three pins in my ankle. When I, so when I got run over by the car, she said, this, it sounds like, you know, if you don't get out of there, I don't know what's going on with your dad, but if you don't get out of there, a plane's going to land on you at this point. So I'm going to send a car. She had, instead of going, like, the ambulance picked me up and my Aunt Gail like, got on the phone and arranged for a, a limo to take me to Cedar sinai instead of getting my ankle worked on in Santa Barbara. So I literally, like, like they dosed me up with, you know, Tylenol codeine, gave me a couple pillows to prop my leg up and sent me to Cedar sinai And um, I moved in with them at that point. And the kids were already, Moon was acting and uh, Dweezil was an MTV VJ and doing a little bit of acting. I think he was dating Molly Ringwald at the time. And uh, so I, I, Gail was like, I'm going to get you an agent and help you, you know, start acting. And uh, she, she met, she introduced me to, a, to Dweezil's agent, Sandy Dudak at ICM. And she said, I'll send you out on a couple things. We'll see how it goes. And uh, the first thing I, I read for was Tequila Sunrise and I got it. And she said, okay, I'll give you a couple more chances. And, and then Corey Feldman had me read for Dream a Little Dream. And I brought Corey Haim with me because he was my boyfriend. And I think Mark Rocco, the director was like, well, if I give you a part, maybe Corey Haim will do, do the part. <laughs> so you can have a part. So I got that movie. And then Watchers was my third movie, which Corey Haim was like, if, if Lala doesn't have a part, I'm not doing the movie. So I, I mean, if I feel like I, I didn't really get that part on my own, he kind of forced them to give me the part, but that's how I, that's how I got started. So when I, I got three movies in a row, Sandy Dudak was like, okay, I'm going to sign you. And, and then I started auditioning all the time, but I was pretty still? lucky. Yeah, that, that's, that is lucky. That was a good yeah. streak. Um, do you yeah. still, are you still? Acting? I, I am. Yes, I'm. I'm doing a movie right now um, with Zan Cassavetes. Um, we've been we've been shooting for for a while. We only shoot on the weekends. It's just sort of like this vampire movie. Uh, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but it is the first time I've I've been acting since I had my daughter. The last movie I did was in 2010. So it's it's good to be doing it again. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Does she, yeah. does she seem like she wants to get involved with acting at all or she doesn't and she's excellent she like, she's such a natural but she's also since she was like three she is she's always blocking me and giving me line readings i feel like she could be a really good director she's like she wants you know, she makes these little movies and edits and as most kids do with technology today there's so it's so easy to figure out how to edit these little interesting TikToks and whatever they're doing. I don't even understand what they're doing, but <laughs> I know but she's been, like, pay for all these editing apps. And I'm like, are you still yeah. using this? You know? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do, do both of you recommend the business to, to, to a child? Would you recommend it? What do you, what do you say to that, Nicole? Um, for me, it's like, you have to have parents that could be there all the time um, you know, watching you like a hawk. Uh, and so luckily my kids don't haven't expressed any interest in that whatsoever. Um, so for me, I think every family has their own, what's right for them. Um, I'm thankful that my girls are not, I don't know. What about you, Lala? Yeah. I'm thankful that she's not interested in, in it as, as well. Cause I, I, I mean, I don't know what it's like for kids now. I, I what we lived through and what I saw some of our friends go through uh, scares the heck out of me. You really do have to be completely, I, I don't, I, I don't think I could even devote that much time to, to being what would be necessary for a child actor. You know, I'd have to give up everything and be there 24 seven. Cause I'm, I wouldn't dare leave my kid alone on, on any set with anybody. Right. And even just like the auditioning process and it's like 
the industry is so uh, much more competitive and there's so, so many more people trying to audition that it's like that process alone is a full-time job because Keegan has some friends that do it and I I look at it and I kind of cringe I'm like oh my god they you know constantly auditioning and luckily they live local and stuff like that but I hear about people who like drive hours and then you wait for hours and um I mean now I guess a lot of the auditioning is um by tape you know or tape so dating myself tape you record it <laughs> <laughs> you record it. Um, so I guess that's probably easier, but um, no, yeah, it's a full-time job to be like a stage parent. Like that's yeah. wild. Yeah. You know, there's so many people from the outside believe because now there are so many more channels or, or so many other, you know, ways to create movies or television shows that they think it's easier to become, you know, an actor. And it seems like, as you just said, Nicole, the competition is still, you know, through the roof and maybe, because there's so many ways of either being shown on camera through your phone or through, you know, your iPad, whichever way you're, you're watching, it's um, it, it's still pretty tough and pretty competitive that, you know, you've seen so many reality shows, which didn't exist when we were kids, that people think, hey, I, I can be a star too. And some, maybe maybe I'm crazy, but when I was a kid and I, I never did any acting, Lala, la, I was just a, a radio guy as I got older, um, I never had the desire to be in front of a camera, but now it seems like so many young people have that desire to be in front of that camera. Yeah. Yeah. To everybody wants to, well, I, I don't know about you, Nicole, but when I, when, whenever you do those like auditorium gatherings with the kids, at, you know, in elementary school and, and they ask all the kids to say what they want to be when they grow up, it was like, you know, ninja, ninja, YouTuber, ninja, YouTuber, YouTuber, YouTube, like every kid answered YouTuber and it just, uh, it breaks your heart. They're like, oh man, that's, that's what they, that's what they strive to be. Like a, a, they a, love it. They love that <laughs> YouTube so much. Now, it, it, I mean, TikTok wasn't around so much back then, right? but now it's like, now it'd be TikToker. TikToker. Yeah. But I yeah, do also yeah. think kids tend to answer of like what they're into at that moment. Like, do they really want to put that kind of work into being a YouTuber, TikToker, or right. do they just love it so much that they're like, yeah, I'll be that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things I always do when I look at like the date and I'll see, you know, whatever, June 25th and, and I'll <laughs> type in celebrity birthdays. And half of them now are YouTuber, TikToker. <laughs> you know, they, I mean, they literally show up in that celebrity. If people have never heard of you before. Search? Celebrity yeah. birthdays? I do. I do. I do. I, I, well, I, I, we, I do a thing on, on my, my sports show where oh. we do we do how old are they and how much are they worth? And we uh -huh. always go, we go through all the, the celebrities, but I'm always looking for famous people on that day that we do the game. And it's amazing how many are YouTubers or TikTokers. And I, and I have no idea who these people are. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, there are so many more platforms and so much more. So mm -hmm. much, there's a lot of content, so much more content out there. But like we were talking to Paul Ruddy last week, um, the casting director, but then he gets like 10,000 submissions, you know. So it's like it's still uh, it's the same. The competition is still the same, but it's just on a larger scale. So, yeah, there's a lot more ways, a lot more platforms, a lot more content. But there's, you know, so many more people that want to do it. So, you know, a blessing and a curse, just like everything else. Right. Lalo, have you ever thought about writing a book? I mean, people talk about it all the time, you know, and then people always should say, ah, who would be interested in, you know, where I came from? But the fact that, you know, you came from a star-studded family, did, did you ever think about, you know, your childhood story? I, I've been writing for about four years. Yeah. I'm not a good writer at all. I, I can't, I mean, look, I left school, uh, when I was in in my junior year, and I uh, I had undiagnosed ADHD my whole childhood, I I don't even know how I made it past the grades that I passed. I I literally can't write write <laughs> at all, um, but I have a great story, you know. So I've been I've been working on a book for <clears throat> a few years and looking for a ghostwriter. I'm trying to do a proposal right now. I'm so luckily there's these great you know, apps that help with, with, um, grammar and, um, su sub stack I've been using lately, just putting a few things out there. And, um, 
you can also just speak right into my word document, which is fantastic because that makes it so much easier. But I, I'm, you know, I look, I read it back and I, I'm so hard on myself because I, I just, I need a, I need a ghostwriter for sure. I need somebody who has more command of the English language and can put in more descriptive words because I, I find that I have the word like every other. Every other <laughs> Me too. My daughters will say that to me too. They're like, can you not say like so much? Uh, so embarrassing. I'm 52. Where is it? Why am I still talking about like a valley girl? Yeah. In us, I just, I, I don't even know I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. How would it go over with the, with your family? I mean, as far as, you know, the, as I said, there are famous people in your family too. If you were to put a book out there, would it be well received or would it be like, Hey, this is, you know, too much information without our permission. I think it would go over okay. I think um, Amit, my cousin Amit has <clears throat> uh, written a couple books. He wrote a, a children's book and he wrote a book about um, monsters. I can't remember the title of it right now, but um, he's been telling me to write a book since about 2003. And, and Moon's written, she's in on her second book right now. She wrote a book, I, I probably around 2003 as well. And this is her, she's on her second memoir. Well, this is more of a like an actual memoir. The first one was sort of a made up character based kind of on her life. But I think that they, I think they would all be supportive of it. I do. I, I worry about the, like my ex-husband or some of the people because in the 90s, I, you know, there was a lot of partying going on. I was on a world tour with my ex-husband. There was a lot of other bands and other people involved. And I'm going to deal with that later on when I have a publishing deal and I have somebody that can help me. Like, how, how do I change names? Do I leave names out, leave it up to the, I don't know how to do that yet. Cause I, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to say things that, that might be harmful. And it was all beautiful. It's all an incredible experience, you know, but it could, it could sound a little dark. Some of it, <laughs> it was definitely dark some periods. So yeah. I think, I, I think that my family would be supportive for sure. Yeah, that's Good deal. that. It would be a great. It would be great to read read your book. It's I, I. I'm like you. It's like, and how do you structure it? You know, it's like that's it. It takes a special kind of mind, right, to be able to realize. Okay, this needs to all go here and there. Like, where do you start? Where's the middle? Where's the end? Like, it's so much. It seems so overwhelming to me. Yeah. But yeah. So good for you. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to focus like pretty much on the 90s, you know, the 80s and 90s for right now. I was going to do this full like a from beginning to now. But then I realized like, no, the the, the 90s are more interesting. Um, there was there's a lot a lot more going on then. I mean, I think that's what people want to hear about, too. You know, yeah. I don't know about you, Nicole, but people hit me up about Corey. Uh, my DMs are constantly filled with Corey Hain questions. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Uh, do yeah. You, have you talked to Feldman at all, like in l later years? or? I talked to him in like 2017, 2018. He was doing a documentary. Did he, did he approach you about that? Yeah. 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 So I, um, and then strangely, some, Somebody that I don't I don't know that is like a, a fan of of Dream a Little Dream and sent me a um, cameo. Is that what it is? Yeah, a, a happy birthday cameo from Corey Feldman. Oh, oh as, if, as if that's what you wanted. <laughs> and he posted it on my Facebook page. I mean, I you know the, whatever. The, 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 the plot was sweet, but that's so funny. Yeah. yeah, people ask me about him too all the time. And I always find it um, hard to talk about because a lot of that was pretty dark. And yes. um, I don't want to hurt his mom or his sister mm -hmm. or anybody by talking about anything. And it's always like, I always have to tiptoe. I always feel like I'm tiptoeing around the subject. I don't know how you feel. 
Yeah, I do too. I, I because there there's so many people that love him. There's so many edits that people are making, and they tag me in them, and um, so many questions. I mean, people just love him so much, uh, and I do. I feel I, I I worry about Judy and and his sister. I, I um, so I try to just keep it as as general and light as I can. Yeah. And, and then I've, I've the, the last year or two, I've just sort of stopped responding to all of them. At first I thought I needed to respond to all of them. And then it, there was so many, I think people were saying, Hey, by the way, if you, you know, ask Lala, she'll, she'll respond. Cause I started getting like 10 a day. <laughs> and <laughs> that's like, I can't deal with this. And I started telling them, you know, I appreciate it, but I honestly, I can't, I can't answer all of these. It, it's taking up too much time. So it's, it's, yeah, I've, I've had to put a, kind of avoid answering them lately but yeah, same same and it's just yeah it's hard it's hard to talk about someone when they're not here and it's yeah. hard to talk about someone when they have living family that have a different side to a story it's just yeah it's all really touchy so i, t I try to shy away from it as well yeah yeah Dragon he was a great spirit you know with all that being said he was like such a fun sweet soul yeah. Because yeah. I know why people love him so much and why, you know, the legacy lives on like that. Right. Yeah. yeah it, I, it, you know, I, I get that question for me all the time because people know that I see Nicole all the time. And then when you sit there and you look at the situation with uh, what, what you two, you know, actually having firsthand information and, and knowing him, it's um, it, it's one of those things people ask me all the time, like, is, is Nicole feel comfortable talking? I go, it's, it's not my story to tell. If Nicole wants to talk about it, she'll talk about it. But both of you are in, obviously, protection mode because you, you, you care about that person. Yeah. 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 And I care. I, I Do you talk to Judy? Do you ever? You know, we do. You know, we message each other from time yeah. to time. And I know that she's, you know, gotten a little upset at times, you know, about what people are saying and can you defend him and that sort of thing? And it's like, you know, I just rather just kind of step away. Yeah. Um, and she's been through a lot. She's a cancer survivor. So is his sister. Right. Um, just beat right. cancer. And so it's like, you know, the last thing I want to do is add stress to anybody's life or emotional yeah. well being. Like, just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I can't imagine um, losing a child. I, and I, I, my heart goes out to you. Uh, that I just can't even imagine, and and to have it like the you know the nine one one calls out there and all whatever all this stuff that the the Feldman stuff all of it it's just it it's heartbreaking and um, drug addiction is so so brutal and and you know I just I I don't want to. I wouldn't want, I don't want anybody to suffer more than they already have. You know, it's, it's enough to lose a child and to go yeah. through everything that they're going through. And I have, yeah, I just, I want people to celebrate him. And I wish he was here to feel the amount of love that, that these people have for him. Because sometimes I'm like, how old are you? And, you know, I'm surprised by some of them or like, I'm yeah. 47 and some of them are like i'm 13. <laughs> it's amazing because i think too what's kind of unfair is that um there was a there was a, a moment in time where the quarries were looked at and sort of uh um looked down upon a little bit or like you know they were bad news cheesy this that you know there was the moment where they weren't cool yeah so, um luckily you know it's all come full circle and people appreciate um, the work that they did and it's that that's gone that stigma is gone and i think that he was still in that time when he passed yeah of where people weren't um weren't praising him and accepting and all of that it was still this like you know critical eye on them and that's kind that's sad because like you yeah. said, it would be great that he knew that, that all that, all the fan, like there's so many like Instagrams and all these fan pages of his, that people, you know, pay tribute to him. And he would love that. He would love that so much. So hopefully he does see it. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hopefully all of that is true and, you know, he can see it and he can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I hope that Judy feels, feels that, I mean, I know she feels happy, but I think 
some of the negative stuff is is probably overwhelming how good the positive is but yeah there's there's so much positive out there and you're right it for a long time they were made fun of yeah you know? there was a, a, a i think that that reality show really i don't know career choices i mean it's yes. like again addiction really can can ruin everything and um and people were so critical about like the drug addiction part instead of now where people empathize and yeah. people understand and you know they're a little bit more uh you know woken up a little bit he not to use that word but like they're more aware of like this is a sickness and this isn't something to be made fun of this is something yeah. that's serious you know so i think that luckily people have evolved yeah. socially like that because yeah, yeah was thank goodness and yeah that, it, right. I know, I know. Like, well, you don't have a choice in in addiction. Like, people always thought, especially back then, that it was a choice. Like, you know, you just stop. Why do you? Why would you do something that's harmful? You don't. Right. Have and a they're choice. not taking into consideration these were kids. They were kids. Yeah. You know. Yeah. With, with these issues, kids, children. So, um, you know, to think that people were like making fun of that, you know. So I'm so I'm glad that society is more sensitive now in that respect because whoa you know taking down little kids because they thought yeah. a, a, a sickness is like yeah it's shameful. You know I think yeah. hum, human nature you watch this with a lot of people whether it's uh, it's celebrities that are actors or even sports stars but it seems like as a society we love to build people up you know and and like you know when when Corey Haim for instance you know became famous at the beginning you saw this kid that had a tremendous amount of energy and was amazing to watch you know on screen and then when he went through his bad time i think there are people that hey you know his life's not perfect so you know makes them feel better about themselves but then unfortunately he didn't get a chance to go through the the up to the down which happens all the time and then to to see the the finished product of, of people rooting for him at the end where he was on an upswing and you know you see it with stars all the time where people you get your fan base almost back and you know 10 times compared to what it once was but for some reason we like to see people knock down maybe it humanizes them or at the same time makes us just feel better about ourselves that their lives aren't perfect but it, it's sad that he didn't get the third part he didn't yeah. get a chance to see the third part yeah yeah, yeah man yeah no. Oh boy, I, I appreciate you, Lala. Though even a, addressing it, because I know it's it's one of those things that comes in all the time on this show, and uh, I've never once wanted to push Nicole towards it because she's she's in protective mode, and and I just figure you know what, exactly everything you said, Nicole, is exactly why I thought we have never discussed it on your show, is you know you're protecting you know the mom, the sister, and everyone else, and even though you have a story, it's uh, there are people that are, are heartbroken out there every single day. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you, this and Dave, you know way too well. It's like if this happened to your child and then people are talking any kind of negative, I'd be like knocking people out. I'd be punching people yeah. in the throat. You know what I mean? I, I and, and be hysterically crying like I, it would tear me apart. So, uh -huh. yes, I think that, you, you, you know, we all have a story, but sometimes things are better left unsaid. And sometimes they're even though you are part of the story, it's not really your story to tell necessarily. So. You know, some absolutely. things are sacred and kept to ourselves. But, uh, but absolutely, thank you, Lala. Thank you for sharing everything with us. I hope we get to see that book soon. Yes, thank thank you so much for having me on and and for for talking about these things. I know there. Uh, I did. I I wasn't sure if I should bring up that that part of that we share, but um, no, it's something we, we we can totally relate to because we yeah. both go through the same kind of sensitive topic i'm glad i'm glad to, it's nice for me to talk to somebody that feels the same way and has to also right. tiptoe around it because it is rough you know and you just sit there yeah. and like i don't know if i'm making the right decision i don't know what to, what to say what not to say yes. so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really and rough. i'm so thankful that we have reconnected via social media in the last few years i love seeing your posts and i love your your responses are so supportive and sweet and kind and i just I'm so happy that that uh, we're back. We're orbiting in the same 
area. Yeah. That's the one great thing about social media, right? Yes. I mean, you yes. cannot replace that. You get to see old friends. You get to see their children and their lives. And Lala's got this gorgeous daughter that looks exactly <laughs> like her. And like they're carbon copies of each other. And it's just like, it's just so fun to see. There's so much good to social media as well as the bad. And I kind of cherry pick what I look at on social right. media. You yes. know, as soon as the negative, I starts negative I leave but um yeah it's great to be able to catch up and one click away to send somebody a message and you know and able to tell you like how much I admired you you know growing up and it's just like um all these things you wouldn't really necessarily get to say so yeah yeah thank yeah. you and, and I admired you so growing up too I, I just I'm so, Which is so uh, weird that's just like that's so weird to me I have to process that <laughs> oh my goodness. You, 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 like the most beautiful i i just yeah you you and Alyssa were my like just the most beautiful i wanted to be either one of you so badly <laughs> uh, we all wanted to be everybody else <laughs> yeah right? that's one thing we all share we wanted to be somebody else that's amazing well, thank you for sharing your story with us and oh, thanks for having me do it yeah okay well, thank you and good luck with that book because I think you should really do that. Yes. In the movie. I, I, the I, rest I, of the, in the movie. Okay. Bye. Take care, Lala. Nice Bye -bye. to meet you, Dave. Thank you. Nice meeting you. That was uh, that was cool. Yeah, I tell you what, for me on the outside, getting a chance to just sit there and listen to you two talk, I thought it was absolutely fascinating that you, the way you it, it talked about when she would walk in her room and that she would look at you, you know? And I think that I think so many people do that, whether you know they're they're actors or not actors. I think it happens in everyday life, whether yeah, they go, no, go to a party, they go to a little league field, whatever else it is that they, you know that you see people in the neighborhood, and you're thinking that person has this going on, and at the same time they're looking at you. And I, I think people don't realize their self worth a lot of times. Well, you know what else I find funny that because you're saying that like in the neighborhood, don't you also feel like? Um, a lot of situations, like high school situations, I didn't go, you know, to high school, but I would see the friends and it's like the the really popular girl, the really popular guy or whatever, who were like, you know, the cool guys and weren't necessarily the nicest. They kind of peaked at high school. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then it was like oh, yeah. the nerds and the people who weren't like in the popular crowd or whatever that like blossom later and, yeah. you know, become like these amazing people because they weren't that. I, I just, I find it so interesting how it through stages of life too, things really kind of change. Exactly right. Ex exactly right. Yeah. From the outside, I mean, someone who, who just knows like knew you through, through TV or knows Lala through the, through the movies. I was telling you before uh, we, we started the show that I had a college roommate who watched dream a little dream, like every day it was on cable all the time. And I was like, are you ever going to go to class? He just constantly watched this movie over and over again. And I was so tempted to reach out to him. You won't believe what we're doing today on Nicole show, <laughs> but it, so it, it, but that's all he knew. That's all he knew uh, was that. And, and he was, you know, it was at the same time, we were all Corey Haim fans or Corey Feldman fans watching License to Drive and watching the, these movies and going, man, how did these guys do it? And it wasn't a matter of because these guys were able to pull girls. It was the charisma that the energy that Corey Haim had that we would all sit there and, and we weren't as guys, guys love to be jealous of other guys. I know girls do the same thing with other girls, but guys always find a reason to put down another guy. He was just, he, he had energy that no one else had. So I love the fact that you two brought up his name on, on the show because it does happen a lot where people ask, are you ever going to address, you know, the Corey Haim story? And um, I think both of you explained it perfectly on why, it's not really your story to tell, even though you lived in the middle of the story. So I'm glad we got to that today. That was uh, that. I think that was a big part. Uh, let me knock through a couple of questions uh, that that the audience has for you, Nicole, and we'll we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, again, if you want to ask Nicole a question, it's easy. All you have to go is to go to the website perfectlytwistedpod.com, and you see the mailbag there, and you can ask Nicole questions. Well, I'll ask her on there which ones uh, that I chose for. This one's from uh, Courtney. How did you like working with David Charvette? I love Summer and Matt coupling on Baywatch and literally stopped watching you after the relationship ended and you decided to uh, to basically leave the show. Will he be part of the, your new documentary? Uh, first of all, it's David Charvet. Charvet. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should know. I, my, my last name has a T in it, too, and everyone pronounces the T. The T doesn't count. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, Damn so it. You, of all people, would know that. I know. Um, I completely blew it. <laughs> got it. Got it. Pull your chain there. Um, 
<laughs> it's funny because I knew David um, from growing up. Uh, he hung out with a lot of friends. I hung out with, he went to Beverly Hills High School. And um, so I already knew David. So it was, it was comfortable to work with him. Um, everybody will be involved to some degree in the, in the documentary. So um, you'll definitely, you'll definitely see something about him. Fantastic. All right, here we go. Question two, uh, getting ready to go on a second family trip to Los Angeles in July. Went last year as well. My stepdaughter is 10. We'll be going to Universal for a day. Any must-do activities while in Los Angeles for a family? Wow. Um, well, there's so much to do in LA. I, I guess it kind of depends if you want to do like the Hollywood touristy thing or there's so many beautiful things to see in LA. Like go to Lake Hollywood. There'll probably be like it's a beautiful reservoir right in the middle and you can just take a quick walk around it. Um, be very careful in West LA, <laughs> West Hollywood <laughs> used to be such a fun city. A lot of good things to do. And now it's pretty dangerous. Um, Universal's great. Then I, I, you know, there's so many beautiful hiking trails. Like we just went to um, Eaton, Eaton Falls, um, Eaton Canyon yesterday where there's this huge Creek and waterfalls and the kids got to play. So it kind of depends what part of, LA you want to see because there's it's so diverse and so so many different things you can go up to the mountains you can go out to the desert you can do Hollywood Boulevard um so enjoy it whatever you do the Hollywood sign you can hike up to the Hollywood sign horseback ride around there there's um yeah so enjoy it and use your navigation and read all your <laughs> true it's good, good advice for them. Use the navigation. Also, I will tell anyone who's never been to Los Angeles before, if you go to Hollywood, it is not what you think, just so you know. That's not where all the actors are hanging out. And that's yeah. awesome. Also, it's not like New York City where you're going everywhere you look, you're going, there's something that really famous that you want to see. Man, it is it is it is dirty. Like the walk of fame is dirty. It changes what? so much. Like the vibe of Hollywood Boulevard changes. Yeah you know, yeah. every couple of years, it's, it's a totally, true. like a totally different place. So, um, but it is fun to see if you've never seen it or, you know, at least drive. Real it slow. is. <laughs> it is. And I love, I love the, the Hollywood sign and everything that you just yeah. mentioned. The walk to the Hollywood sign is pretty cool. Don't take any pictures with Spider-Man or any other superhero. Those yeah, are not the superheroes the and they smell like smoke and urine. Stay away from all of them. Um, uh, next question from Courtney. Uh, since I've already asked about David Charvet, I also have a question about Kelly Slater. How did you all get along while working in Baywatch? You seem very fortunate to be working with such good-looking guys on that show. <laughs> um, well, Kelly, it's funny because Kelly and I shared a lot of friends because I grew up in Huntington Beach, and he being the surf um, king that he is, uh, we knew a lot of the same people. So when we were, we actually shot in Huntington Beach a few times and, you know, we would have all the same like group of friends after work and stuff like that. So that was, that was really cool. Really nice guy. I don't think he wanted to be there. Um, he did not want to be on set acting and he kind of regretted, I think, getting involved. He talks about it in a documentary, but I think that it, you know, he got made fun of a lot in the surf world because, you know, Baywatch wasn't, um, you know, wasn't taking that seriously. So uh, I think he had a tough time kind of being there, but I, I bet looking back now, it's, he realizes it wasn't so bad, but great no, guys, so you know, great guys yeah. easy to work with, you know, not, not creepy. <laughs> That's always a plus <laughs> when the guys are not creepy. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so great that, that, yeah, yeah. I, I, to be honest, with you, I have zero friends that we would make fun of them for being on Baywatch. We'd be like, how in the hell did you pull that off? Like all of us would have been jealous, you know, not once would my friends be goofing on any of those guys. But that was uh, that was it. That was fun. That was fun talking to Lala today. That was that was a good time. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, I know. I was, that like, was so good. Happy that I have the confidence to like tell her, you know, like, you're so cool. That, that, I love it. I would it. have never I, been I, able to say that years ago, ever. So that, life that, is good. That's, it is. Life is good. All right, yeah. Nicole, we're going to do it again next week. Yes. That, that, was, that was awesome. And again, you can check out the website. It's Perfectly Twisted Pod. And of course, uh, Nicole Eggert right there. And you can check out uh, the mailbag. Please uh, feel free to write in with your questions. We'll get those on there. And uh, I was love to listening to you. Answer. Subscribe to us. And uh, you can check out all on social media all across. It's, um, it's Perfectly Twisted. I almost forgot the name. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, We're all good. Across all platforms, see? Um, So check us out and give us a like and a subscribe, and we will see you next week.